A long time ago, there were people. The people evolved from pretty dumb people to less dumb people. As humans, we have stuff. In fact, we had so much stuff that we started sitting around thinking about random crap. Thinking about numbers, for example. You can guess what happens next. And so it begins. First, there were numbers. Each number represents an amount of something. Two can represent two fish, two eggs, two videos. Two of anything. Numbers are an abstract idea, it doesn't correlate to anything physical. This is why the idea numbers took a long time to develop, back in the primitive times one is too busy surviving than thinking about numbers. But once people developed numbers, everything started. Say you have one fish and another one falls from the sky, because that's something normal. You now have two fish. This is addition. One fish plus one fish is two fish. No, get get the the camera. Camera. But sometimes, fish doesn't just fall from the sky. Say you have three friends, but one of them starts hating you. Now you only have two friends. This is subtraction. And now you're sad, because you have one less friend. Back then, they didn't use the numbers we have now. Instead, the numbers were symbols, and the number of symbols indicates the value of the number. For example, the Babylonians had a pretty darn nice symbol. One is this, and two is this. And then, when they got to 10, they made the symbol turn sideways. So 10 is this, and 21 is this. Since the Babylonians really loved the number 60, they made 60 a bigger version of the original symbol. So, 69 is this. But what about ancient Egyptian numbers? Alright, I'll just pull up this chart. What were they thinking when making these numbers? Like the drawings are cool, but what is this? And what in the world is this? Come on these numbers take forever to draw, especially when you have to repeat them. Also do these symbols even mean anything? Mayans had a cool number system too. But it is no less confusing than the Egyptian numbers, so I will skip it for now. The Romans had a similar approach. They use letters, which was easy enough to write, but the letters have no meaning, and they also have this weird thing where 4 is this, and not this, and 9 is this, and not one of these. Then came multiplication, which screwed everything up. Invented around BCE 1700 by the Egyptians, it was too difficult to do multiplication with the extremely complicated number system they had. So, instead of doing actual multiplication, the Egyptians did a life hack method which basically involves repeated addition. Romans too, had trouble. I mean, how does one do multiplication with this mess of numbers? Plus, these numbers are very 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 long. Guess before we get smarter, we need a better number system. But then, people from India figured it out. They invented the numbers we use today. Well, not quite, but very similar. They introduced a revolutionary feature. Place values. The rightmost digit is 1s, then the next one is 10s, then the next one is 100s, etc. This makes working with numbers easy. Subtraction and addition. No problem. Multiplication and division. Easy. Fractions and decimals. Sure. Comparing numbers. It can do it. Plus. There were no more repeated writing of complex symbols. A while later, they invented yet another revolutionary feature, zero. While zero may sound like a zero, it actually is more. It can be a place value plus a holder. Not sure what that means? Basically, if you get 50 on a test, you'd probably get screamed at. But if you add a zero, 50 becomes 500, and you go from zero to hero. Although a 500 still wouldn't beat me, JK JK JK, the Romans didn't have a zero, because they thought it was useless having a number that represented nothing. I guess their brains were nothing too.
with these revolutions, more complex and abstract ideas came to be. Parts of a number, decimals and fractions, numbers below zero, negative numbers, and more advanced calculations. Enter Greek philosophers. Everyone loved them, they were on statues, busts, and had their portraits printed on literally every textbook in existence. They all had long beards, sat around thinking about random things, and taught those things to others. Sometimes, they were wrong, but they didn't care, and nobody else bothered to care either. But sometimes they were right. By sometimes I mean occasionally. By occasionally I mean rarely. Sorry ancient Greek philosophers. They were famous for tackling geometry, that is sitting on beaches drawing weird things, and when they got rich they did the same with their fancy paper. They made many formulas that we now have to memorize. Some were easy, some were hard, and some look easy, but actually are very complicated. But these formulas were mostly all figured out by playing around with shapes. If you search up the proof of formulas of most shapes it mostly just involves playing around These philosophers loved order and detested chaos. Unfortunately, chaos is everywhere in geometry. For example, in right angle triangles. Imagine you have a 1 by 1 square. Then, you cut that square diagonally. This half looks innocent and simple. But this slanted side is root 2, which is an irrational number. Oh no. Weird irrational numbers are everywhere. They have invaded regular numbers. They are monsters. The ancient Greek philosophers didn't like them. But they were there and eventually got, sort of, figured out. Slowly but surely, people got used to weird crap and math. And then this guy Zhu Changzi figured out a lot of digits of pi. Then came the next revolution. It was algebra. Algebra was explored by the earlier Babylonians and Greeks, but this guy, Muhammad ibn Mizalchrism, in what is now Iraq, wrote a long book with a longer name, the compendious book on calculation by completion, about balancing equations, aka algebra. The thing that would continue to haunt students for centuries. Algebra is like Australia, it's the opposite of regular math. You do everything backwards. Or, it's like being a detective, finding clues until you finally found out the murderer. And then, this Fibonacci guy was just randomly adding numbers. But then he found that the numbers formed a pattern, and it was everywhere. He discovered the Fibonacci sequence, which is used literally everywhere in nature, as overused as this voice in YouTube videos. And then, this guy, Rene Descartes, made algebra 10x harder by introducing the Cartesian plane. Then there was Galilea, aka Galilea de Vincenzo and all TD Galilei. And he was a rebel because he did a lot of math about planets and proposed that the sun is in the center of our system, which is so bad that he got in trouble for it. People didn't really believe him because of what Greek philosophers said over a thousand years ago, even though he had tons of evidence. Then there was Newton, a big meanie. He was half mathematician physicist, half wizard. An apple fell on Newton's head, and he invented gravity. He also made calculus, which was important, but also really 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 hard. And also there was Albert Einstein. Everyone knew him but no one understood him. And now I have to end this video. Hey. -a. Congratulations for making it this far. I'll go more in depth about this stuff in other videos, as well as other subjects. And please do like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Stay tuned, and see you next month. Goodbye.